Hey guys, it's Jade Effects, and I'm back with another video. I'm here to break down this uh, these trades that we took this week in my free Telegram group. So, as you guys already know, I have a free signal room on Telegram, and uh, you could just you could join the signal room by clicking the link in the description under this video. It's completely free. I call all my signals in there, and you can make money with us um, pretty much weekly at this point. We're pretty much killing it. Uh, very often uh, I'm gonna go into also the trade copier uh, that I have and how my students are doing and my clients are doing on my trade copier um, for those that don't know a trade copier is just you know um it's a platform it's a system pretty much like a software that I use to copy my trades automatically that I take onto my clients accounts um, so I'll show you guys that in a second um, but yeah this the, you know the trades that I that I call out in my free signal room uh, you know I also take on my trade copier so the first trade that I wanted to go over was GBP JPY so we bought GBP JPY right around here let me just uh, show it show you guys um, in the signal room just so you know I called it um, I called it early this morning like around four uh four in the morning eastern time i called it around like 151.278 um and it did end up dropping a little bit lower than that to get a better entry but uh the stop loss was at 151.060 and the first take profit was at 151.700 and the second take profit was at 152.000 so as you can see this trade was uh, about like a 3.4 uh, to 1 risk reward ratio so this is the trade that we took um, the trade the, the the stop loss was pretty much um, right down here uh, at about 151 uh, 0, 6, 0. Um, and we ended up getting out of this trade early uh, I did personally some of my students are probably still in this trade I told them uh, to either take uh, you know 80% profit around up here um, or hold you know the rest of the trade with stop loss at break even so everybody has their stop loss at break even this is a trade that is still active pretty much I already took my profit just because I was happy with 1.5% uh, that I made on this trade I ended up making like 1500 profit for the day um and i was good with that you know so um also you know i have a lot of clients on my trade copier so m a lot of the time i don't hold my trades super long i like to take profit um when i see the trade starting to turn around just because you know i do have clients to think about and i usually want to secure profit most of the time you know and keep that consistency so yeah we took this trade uh right around here we could have gotten a much better entry down here at the wick, at the bottom of the wick, pretty much. Um, but, you know, we we entered a little bit early. And, um, you know, I just didn't want to jump in for another. I didn't want to stack any positions on this trade. I usually don't stack my trades. Um, I only risk like 1% per trade. Uh, again, because I'm trading on a trade copier and, and my students and my clients are on my trade copier. So... I'm always thinking about them. I'm always managing my risk and preserving my capital, uh, you know, and I'm not just, you know, like throwing 50 lots on, on a trade just because I think it's a great trade. Even if I think it's the best trade in the world, I still manage my risk extremely well. That's what keeps you in this game, uh, you know, for a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years. Um, me personally, I'm trying to be in this game for, you know, for, you know, until I can't trade no more pretty much. You know, and, uh, you know, I've been trading for seven years already. So, you know, I'm in this game uh, for the long haul. So why was it that we bought uh, GBP JPY? So the reason that we bought GBP JPY overall um, is pretty much because we, you know, obviously GBP JPY is in a huge uptrend. Um let me just delete a few of these things. So obviously GBP JPY is on a huge uptrend. Um, you know, we we can easily identify, 
you know, higher highs and higher lows and higher highs and higher lows, right? Um, you know, we had these huge rallies to the upside. Then we had, you know, big dips to the downside. Then we had huge rallies to the upside again. Then, you know, smaller dips. And then, you know, made a higher low, then a higher high, you know, higher low. You know, and then price, you know, tried to make another higher high, which it successfully did make another higher high. Um, so the reason that we took this trade over here is pretty simple. We had a, you know, a big, um, you know, a very key level of resistance over here at the 151.190 uh, um, range, pretty much, right, at the price range. So, you know, we saw price... Um, pushing up extremely strongly into this level and then just wicking, you know, and dropping down from there. And then again, pushing up and then just completely failing to to break through that level. And then, uh, you know, dropping ex really, really strongly from that level, which is letting me know that there's a lot of selling power in that area uh, or just a lot of um, liquidity in that area. Right. So I was looking, you know, for this area to get broken. Right. Because we are in an uptrend. So until we start making some really, really convincing lower highs and lower lows, I'm not looking to sell. I'm only looking to buy. So, you know, we had price break above that level finally on the hourly and the four hour. Then price pushed above extremely strongly. Then, you know, we saw a strong pullback and a retest of that level, this purple zone, right? The supply and demand zone. And then we saw price wick and create some wicks on the one hour time frame and then push up from there. So uh, what I ended up doing was, you know, coming down to the one minute time frame and pretty much, you know, trying to figure out. Okay, I have my buy zone. I know that I want to buy in this purple zone um, because of the break and, and, and retest uh, strategy that I use most of the time, right? Um, I teach my students to use three different strategies. One is a break and retest strategy that I call the golden method. The second one is, is a strategy that I call um, the Superman strategy, which is like a tr another trend continuation strategy, but it's a little bit different. Um, it's it's also a break and retest, but just a tiny bit different um, just because, you know, the market gives you different scenarios when you're trading and you have to be able to adapt to different scenarios that happen often. Right. So the, the market's all about patterns, but it's not the same exact pattern every single day. You're going to see similar patterns that repeat. You're going to see a few different patterns that repeat. So we have. You know, the the golden method, which is the main, main break and retest uh, strategy that we use. Then we have the, you know, the Superman. And then we have, um, you know, the trend reversal uh, strategy that I teach my students. So this was the golden method, um, you know, because we had that strong break above the, the, you know, key resistance level that later on became support, which is this purple zone here. And we were looking to buy in this purple zone. So really, you know, I should have bought down here. But there was, you know, I, I had a feeling uh, that price just wanted to bounce up from this level over here. So um, I ended up buying somewhere around like here. Right. I, I saw that price was bouncing off of this level here, pushed up, then it pulled back. I was waiting for another bounce off of that level, which I never got. And then I started pushing up again. So I ended up buying like somewhere there um, and then price pushed up a little bit and then it dropped from here. Um, and, and I had this other level marked out just because, you know, I, I this is something that I teach my students in my academy. And, and it's something that you guys have to understand. Price usually likes likes to really test these levels before, you know, continuing the trend. Right. So what does that mean? That means that. I'm usually waiting for a fake out to happen on the smaller time frames when I'm trading uh, a trend on a higher time frame. What does that mean? So what it means is I know that GJ is uptrending on the one hour, the four hour, right? Okay. We know because we see, you know, the trend is very clear. We also have the 200 EMA uh, prices, you know, staying above the 200 EMA. So that's letting us know that the momentum is is 
in you know is uptrending, it's bullish, right? So when I know the trend on the higher time frames is is up, right? I already know I want to buy, right? Okay, that's one. Two, I I I, I'm, I look for where I most likely am going to want to buy, right? By using the break and retest method, right? Or the different strategies that I teach in, in my academy, right? Then I go down to the lower time frames the smaller time frames to figure out, you know, uh, the best place to enter, right? So that we can get the best risk reward uh, possible, right? That's key, right? Uh, your risk reward ratio is is everything, right? So I already knew that I wanted to risk about like 20 pips on this trade, you know, anywhere from like 10 to 20 something pips, right? You know, I was trying to get a really good risk reward ratio on this trade, which we ended up getting a decent one. Um, pretty good, actually. But uh, yeah, so but I had this red level um, down here, right? I drew this red level. So you see, I have this black level up here, right? And that's the first level where I was expecting price to turn around and bounce off of, you know, uh, which it did. But you also have to remember that um you know there's other support and resistance levels that price is going to try to touch right it price is going to try to break this level price is going to try to break this level right so we see that price broke above this uh resistance level right and then it came back down right and we were expecting price to just bounce up from there right we're expecting price to just bounce up from there from the purple zone but before it bounces up it usually tries to break that zone that's what price usually tries to do you see it over and over again that's what these wicks represent these wicks represent price trying to break that level on a smaller time frame right this is very important to understand so why is this important to understand because and you know this can help you get a much better entry level it can help you get a much better entry. So why? Because, you know, I entered somewhere around over here, right? But then price pushed up a little and then it came all the way down. And then I saw that it bounced off of this red level that I had plotted and just completely skyrocketed from there. If I would have been more patient and waited, then I could have got a much better entry. But also you're taking the risk that price may never reach that level. So that's the reason why you have to be careful. You know, entries are very tricky because, you know, if you're trying to get the perfect entry, you can't always get the perfect entry. I never get a perfect entry. Sometimes I do, but the reason why I, I never or I mostly never get a perfect entry is because you're taking a risk. Trying to get a perfect entry every time, you're going to take a risk. You're always taking that risk that the trade can leave you behind. If I tried to get this perfect entry down here, but price, you know, you know, pushed down here and then jumped up from there, I, I, my entry would have never got hit and I never would have got in the trade and it would have and I wouldn't have made, you know, any of the money that I made today. So me personally, I'd rather get a slightly bad entry than no entry at all. That's just me. Right. So, you know. This is the level where I was trying to enter, this black level down, down there. Um, you know, I ended up, you know, entering a little bit just because I opened my charts a little late. You know, I just, I was pretty much, pretty much like went to sleep like at 7.30 last night p.m. Then I woke up like around 4 or like 3.30 in the morning. And since I couldn't sleep anymore, I just ended up, you know, opening, you know, getting, getting up and opening up my, my laptop. And, you know, just looking at some charts because I usually like to check the market around, you know, four in the morning just to see what's happening. Just because I, I like to trade London. Uh, London session is my favorite session to trade, right? Um, I'm also a big fan of trading GBP, JPY just because I love the way it moves. Um, I haven't traded it in a while just because it's, it hasn't been looking, you know, great lately. And the way that I trade is that, you know, I, I, I look for perfect trends and I trade perfect trends. Uh, it doesn't matter what pair it is, but I really enjoy trading GJ. So, you know, we saw that, you know, GBP, JPY, you know, came down here, bounced off of that level, right? Why? Because on the higher time frames, it was creating a wick, right? 
when a fake out happens on a lower time frame, like the one minute, the five minute, whatever, that's a wick being created on the higher time frame. So that fake out happened on the one minute time frame, right? And once price pushed back above this black um, uh, sub key support level or this purple zone, I knew that most likely, you know, price was getting ready to start pushing up. So, you know, I was already in the trade. I was just holding it at that point. We were, you know, a tiny bit in a little bit of drawdown, like 10 pips. Honestly, we were like, in, yeah, the most was like 11, 12 pips uh, drawdown. Um, and we ended up making like, I think we profited like 40 pips on this trade. I think it was somewhere around like 32, like 32, 33 pips profit that we made on that trade. Um, yeah. And, you know, I jumped out early. The trade is still technically valid. Valid. All of my students move their stop loss to break even like we always do once we're in a certain amount of profit on every trade to protect our capital. Um, and, you know, yeah, I took profit like up here just because of market structure. So my in my telegram group, in my signal room, you know, I put uh, the, the first take profit at at 151.700. Um, and it just didn't reach that level. That would have been at like 40 something pips, like 47 pips, uh, like 44 pips profit. Um, and it just missed it by like eight pips, uh, you know, which is completely fine. That happens sometimes. That's why, you know, I tell my students, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you these trades and I, and these trades that I give in the free signal room are, are, I'm telling you they're life changing. I'm telling you they're life. I promise you they will change your life. Just the free signals that I give. Again, you could join the signal room in the in the link in the description below. Uh, it's completely free. It's a no brainer, honestly. Um, but, you know. Yeah, so sometimes you have to adjust, you know, I, I, I have, you know, uh, one take profit, two take profits, you know, but, you know. If, if I feel like I have to get out of the trade early because it looks like it wants to reverse like what's happening here with GJ you know, then I'm going to get out early. That's just the way that it has to be sometimes. You have to adapt to the market, right? Um, so, yeah, the second trade that I want to go over is CAD JPY. So this was a great trade. This one, yeah, this was a phenomenal trade. So uh, I'll delete this one. This was a trade that we took, I think, last week on CAD JPY where we were buying CAD JPY. Uh, that one also hit take profit. Great trade. Um, so we bought CAD JPY again, right? Uh, we had this, you know, beautiful uptrend, right? It, like extraordinary. Like it, literally, it doesn't get better than this. Um, you know, creating, you know, huge, huge higher highs and higher lows. It, literally, you just can't ask for a better uptrend. Um, you know, we had higher highs and higher lows being created. So I knew that I, you know, I was looking obviously for, you know, uh, breaks and retests, right? Um, and what ended up happening was we ended up getting a beautiful break and retest moment right up here, uh, you know, in between the, you know, the 85.490 to 85.540 level, that price range. So, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I'm waiting for, you know, price to, I, I see price rejecting this level here. So, you know, I pay attention. I see price, you know, flying into that zone and then just completely dropping from there. That's letting me know that there's a lot of liquidity in that level. Um, and liquidity is really the key to trading. If you understand how liquidity works, then you really understand how to have an edge in the market. And again, I teach that in my academy. Um, so if you, you know, if you notice price keep, continues over and over again to just drop from that level, uh, but it's also making higher lows while it's dropping from that level, right? So if you notice what's happening here is it's, uh, it's creating, uh, you know, it's creating this uh this uh i think this is called uh i'm not sure what this call what this is called i think that's called a triangle not a triangle pattern i i 
I think, man, I forgot what that's called, but this is a trend continuation pattern. When you see price, uh, you know, uptrending, right? But what happens is it starts to create, you know, higher lows, but it's not creating higher higher highs. It's consolidating at that level, right? So it's just creating the same high, the same high. Same, it keeps stopping at that level, right? But it's creating higher lows at the same time. This is letting you know that most of the time, because of these higher lows being created, it's going to break up through that level and continue the uptrend. So that's what happened. Um, you know, it continued up and uh, broke that that level. I forget what that pattern is called because I don't really trade patterns like that. I usually just trade the same patterns over and over again. They work extremely well for me, uh, like like retardedly well. Like it's it's insane. So I just you know I use what works. Um, you don't really have to overcomplicate trading. Also, when you just understand you know market structure and and the way that the market works and moves and the market patterns that happen over and over again, you know it becomes a lot a lot more clear over time. And you, you just start to really flow with the market like like water. You know, it's the best way I can explain it. But, um, yeah, so, you know, we had this break above this level here. Um, and price pushed up very strongly, then came back down and retested, uh, you know, this purple zone where I was expecting price to bounce up from. So that was my buy zone because we're in an, in a, uh, an uptrend. So as always, what I do is I go down to the one minute or the five minute and uh, I'll, you know, find the best entry point. And really what I'm looking for is, you know, price to be, you know, you know, either extremely oversold, you know, or overextended. Right. And again, remember, I told you price likes to, f you know, create these fake outs on the lower time frames. You know, right? You see this fake out right happening, boom, and then the price just comes back up again. Price likes to create those fake outs. Uh, it really, really likes to try to break those levels before it ends up bouncing off of them. Um, so I always try to wait for uh, the fake out to happen before I jump into the trade. Uh, that's a very, very key thing to understand. Um, so once that fake out happens, you know, I'm trying to enter that trade so yeah you know i i pretty much entered uh down here at this red level um and which was at like 85.492 just to show you guys i called this out i called this trade out in um my free signal room so this is the trade i said i'm buying cad jpy now at 5:25 in the morning uh so that's Eastern time, right? So, like you can see, I called it out. This is the before, and this is the after of that trade. So this was after I called the trade out. I hit the take. I hit the final take profit. So, um, yeah, on that trade, as always, like I explained to to you guys every single time, when I call my trades, um, you know, I, I I always I only call trades that have you know incredible risk to reward ratios. Otherwise, I'm not taking them myself. You know, I'm not calling trades that I'm not taking myself. Um, yeah, so, you know, jumped in this trade down here. It immediately went into profit. Literally, no drawdown on that trade. Not even exaggerating. Um, and, you know, we made about 3.4% profit on that trade. Uh, so, like, 3.4 thousand on that trade. Um, our stop loss was all the way down here at 20 pips. Um, and our take profit, our ultimate take profit was at 70 pips profit. Our first take profit was over here um, where this red uh, um, support and resistance level is at. And uh, that take profit was at like 33 pips. Um, yeah. And, you know, yeah, that was a great trade. Great trade. Um, yeah. And also another thing that I wanted to show show you guys uh, was the trade copier. So my tr I opened up this trade copier uh, January of this year, so 2021. It's only been open for like three months. It's March now, um, and we're absolutely killing it. Um, as you can see, you know, 
we have a lot of people we have three pages almost full um, of a bunch of different people on, on a different you know, a bunch of different clients on my trade copier and what this is is it's pretty much just you know um, people that wanted that they, that liked the way that I trade and they love the consistency of my trades and how much profit I'm able to make consistently and they wanted to copy my trades so you know they just hooked up to my trade copier um, there is a monthly fee if you want to know more about it just just message me either on Facebook or YouTube or uh, or on telegram or Instagram my Instagram is also going to be linked in the bio below um, but yeah if you want to know more about the trade copier uh, message me um, and you know I'll give you all the information you need um, but yeah these are uh, these students are all using uh, most of them are using the you know the FTMO uh, account FTMO accounts with the trade copier that's the reason that you know you see these profits that they're able to make so uh, this student Broderick um, he joined about uh, he joined like he joined uh, the 19th of February um, which was like man I think like almost a month ago and he's already up 7.5 percent so 7,500 profit um, as you can see, the first day we were up like 0.75%. Then the next day we were down like 1.4%. Then the next day we made a little bit of profit, only down like 1.8. The next day we made some good profit. Now we're up 1.3. Then the next day we're up 3%. The next day, you know, and then, you know, you know, go the ups and downs of trading. But now we're at like 7.5%, which is 7,500 profit. Um, which is really really good and every trade that we take is always one percent risk so you know that I'm always managing the risk extremely well so that we never violate any rules or any um, or anything uh, and as you can see all these students are in you know a huge amount of profit on all of their FTMO accounts uh, this student is up six thousand seven hundred profit this other student is up uh, 6,690 profit this other client is up six thousand and twenty dollars profit this other client is up five thousand seven hundred and forty three profit this other student is up four thousand three hundred and ninety seven profit this other student is up four thousand three hundred and fifty two profit this other student is up three thousand eight hundred and sixty one this other student is up two thousand eight hundred and ninety eight and you know it just goes on from there um, you know, and we have students passing their FTMO challenges, uh, you know, weekly. We had a couple of students pass it last week. We had another student pass it the week before that. Um, yeah, and things are going great. Things are going great. Thank God. So, yeah, so um, if you ever want to learn more about the trade copier, feel free to message me on my Facebook, my Instagram, uh, my Telegram, uh, however you feel most comfortable. Again, join my free signal room. Uh, you get great value in there. Uh, you can make a lot of money with us. Um, all you have to do is just take the trades when I tell you to take them and use the stop loss and take profit that I give you and just you know follow the directions um, and manage your risk as well. Always manage your risk when taking any type of trades, uh, whether they're your own trades or their signals. Um, yeah, so the, the link is in the description below. Make sure you uh, join the free signal room and also uh, message me about the trade copy so you can learn more about that. As always, guys, uh, thank you guys for checking uh, my videos out. Um, I'm glad that, you know, I get a lot of messages saying, you know, that you guys are really learning from these videos and that they're, you know, helping you become more profitable. And that's really all that I do this for. I love to teach, um, you know, and it's my favorite thing to do. And I love to see you you guys uh, really make huge progress and make a lot of money using, um, you know, everything that you learn on, on in my videos. So once again, thank you guys for checking my videos out. As always. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.